Bills beat the Chiefs in the regular season matchup, which actually tends to happen. The Bills actually kind of own the Chiefs the last few years in the regular season. How do you feel it's going to carry over into the playoffs this season, and do you see something different happening than usual? Right, so that was the Chiefs' first loss of the season, but there I don't have this in front of me, but there was a great piece of either data or a breakdown where the Chiefs were five plays away from being four and five. Like, their season has not been perfect. They've essentially gotten lucky. Some calls, of course. Everyone likes to bitch about the Chiefs and the referees. But do I? the, the question is, do I think that could carry over to the playoffs? I think the most important thing is for the Bears, uh, I'm sorry, not the Bears, the Bills, to have the same situation, right? They won that game because they're at home. It was a close game, but those fans were electric. Um, I don't know if the Bills were fully healthy. I'll see if I can find that out. But as- assuming both teams are full strength and the Bills are at home, I don't see why the Bills couldn't win. I mean, I think the world of Josh Allen, I think he's a fantastic quarterback. I don't know if he's going to be the MVP of the league this year. But if you ended the year with saying that Josh Allen was the best quarterback in the NFL, I don't really think that that's an incorrect statement. Um, I came into this season thinking the Bills were going to be on a huge downturn. I don't know about you. I I saw the, the moves that the team made and just losing both safeties, losing a couple starting linemen. Um, losing their linebackers left and right. I think Matt Milano is now out for the year. And somehow, some way, Sean McDermott just figures out a way. And it's one of those stories and one of those teams where um, I couldn't believe it. But as long as Josh Allen is healthy and playing, that's a 10-win team penciled in every single season until until further notice. Um, we said that about Patrick Mahomes. And somehow, some way, he sucks this year. If we're being completely transparent and completely honest, the guy's got – 2,400 yards, 15 touchdowns, 11 11 picks. That's just the most mediocre quarterback play in the NFL. Granted, his his weapons are depleted, um, but I think this is just one of those magic times where, you know, the NFL is crazy where you just need to keep throwing stuff against the wall and see what sticks. And this is one of those years where I just hope to God the Bills get lucky. I think they're a better overall team right now somehow some way the Chiefs keep winning and I know the stat you're talking about where it was that little graph that showed um every one score game in the NFL this year if they had flip-flopped in result and I think the the Chiefs were like you said they they went from the highest win total to the lowest win total there was teams like the Bengals that would have uh the Bengals would actually have the best record in the league this year if those one flip score games just flipped over so those one score games, and we're, we've been talking a lot about that in Chicago with Matt Eberflus being what five and seventeen in the last twenty two that he's had. Um, but yeah, I think this might be the Bills' year, and I, I personally hope so. I do like dynasties. I do like excellence in sports. I don't disrespect them when they win. When everybody's like, "Man, this team's annoying" because they just keep winning, I'm like, "Then beat them. Then then hope somebody's good enough to beat them." I don't I don't find that offensive in any way, but. Um, I do I do hope that the Bills kind of pull this one out, especially with the storylines coming out from this year and, and all that stuff. So uh, GK saying Milano is set to play after the Bills. Yeah. I thought I'm he trying had to get confirmation on that, but that, that feels like a huge get for them, right? Yeah, because um, I was just, under the impression torn pectoral end of the season. Normally that's exactly what that means because it's like a three, yeah. four-month injury. But if yeah. he's able to play, I mean th- – pardon my French that that's the Italian who always gets hurt right like yeah yeah uh, he's one hell of a player is all I'll say regarding that because if they can get him he's a true leader um something specific well I guess two things about the Bills right everyone kind of really wrote them off in the public eye once they traded away Stefan Dix oh my god you just lost your alpha number one wide receiver again a little bit of Bears bias here he was a Bears killer I am quoted in I view Stefan Diggs as a locker room cancer. He was having a great season for the Texans before he got hurt, which sucks. But I think it's a bit of addition by subtraction. And on the defensive side of the ball, the Bills have potentially one of the best fourth quarter pass rushing units in the entire NFL if they can get it all right. Um, I don't know every single name. Russo is underrated. I absolutely adore Ed Oliver. And then Von Miller, if he can play like Von Miller, that's a really hard pass rush to stop when the Bills are coming at you and you know they know that you're throwing the football. So again, they took a really good step forward winning against an undefeated team. They're on their way to try and hopefully get the number one overall seed, get a bye, get healthy. And then at that point, again, I would not be surprised if the Bills find their way into the, the Super Bowl. I would personally prefer it. I like to see a little bit of 
change going on and the, Man, the heartache they deserve the it too they lost yeah. four super bowls in a row and i don't think they've ever won a super bowl they deserve exactly where bowl. i was going I with love that Josh Man. Allen, so yeah i like the fans in buffalo i love like kind yeah, of yeah there's so much fun for yeah and then part of me hates sean mcdermott because i feel like he's the uh anti matt eberflus he's exactly what eberflus would be in a best case scenario he's a defensive head coach they run almost identical defensive schemes and he's just good at it and a good game manager. And he trusts his offensive coordinators and Joe Brady and to just kind of come in and be ballsy with his play calling and kind of just coach up his players. He's You want to see what the Bears should have been or could have been? It's the Bills, honest to God. Because that's kind of why I like them, because they are following a similar model as what the Bears are doing right now. Um, I hate them because they're just doing it better than us. So. We are you got to be honest. Tie back the, to the, Bears. the skill group on paper, the Bears blow away the Bills, right? They have three better wide receivers. They have at least the same. I think DeAndre Swift is better than um, James Cook, but the difference right we'll there. We'll call that a wash. Have, yeah, I like wash there. Much better proven quarterback right now. We don't have to talk about um, projections and you know potential talent, any of that stuff. Um, and then their offensive line, obviously night and day bears offensive line terrible before injury or they're bad before injuries terrible with injuries when you're down to your second and third choices even the the bills i i believe are bringing in second string guys due to injuries and they're still you know kicking ass that's the part of it that kind of pisses me off because if i'm not mistaken they do have Dion dawkins who's like an all all world left yeah, tackle fantastic so left tackle that's they pretty much Mitch it, morse though. go they traded away Ryan, Ryan Bates, Bates, who we, we can get into the Ryan Bates debate. I know you tried to flame me yesterday, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I honestly didn't try to because I couldn't remember who who made that statement. So I didn't yeah. try to. I just kind of, I was You have permission asked. to flame me whenever you want, on camera, off camera. I could give a, you know what, man. Yeah, so same totally here, man. Me. Yeah, no worries. It's all just football takes. But yeah, that's kind Thanks, of the one exactly. thing. And I think eight, three, eight weeks through the season, I remember seeing that statistic. And I don't necessarily, we had this conversation pre-show believing in PFF and their grading scales and all that stuff, but DVOA and all those actual, you know, uh, saber metric elevated statistics, they had the number one offensive line through eight weeks in football based on just statistics, pressure rates, uh, yards per carry, pancake blocks, lack of pressures on their quarterback. And that's just kind of a testament to yet again, a reason I'm jealous and pissed off of just finding talent, young talent, elevating it, making your offensive line better rather than making excuses as to why they're not going to be good. The scheme is also crucial and important. And what the quarterback is doing is also stupid, crazy important. And, uh, but this is just this, the epitome of Josh Allen. He's, he's taken everything that he's good at and eliminated mistakes, which was his one big downfall and, you know, cut down on the interceptions and the fumbles. And this is what you get. You get a 10 win team with one guy carrying the load offensively. Yeah, he, it's it's awesome to see them kind of uh, patchwork and offensive skill group around him, just like Mahomes last year. I think that Mahomes, who won the Super Bowl with this cast of players, that was a terrible group of wide receivers. Obviously, you still have Travis Kelsey, and I think that's the big difference now is that Travis Kelsey probably has at this point maybe five Hall of Fame games left in him in his career. He's, he's just going down fast. I think you're being stuff. generous with that number, yeah, even yeah, then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let, let's call it, you know, in the playoffs, he'll rise, whatever you want to say. And then yeah. regarding Mr. Matt Milano, it wasn't a torn pec. It appears to have been a bicep injury. And mm. I'm reading this related story. It's saying that he suffered the injury early in the season. So I think before the preseason, maybe? I, I can't tell. I want to say it was like week one. But yeah, that's that makes sense. Yeah. Um, one more thing about the Bills before we move on to the next topic. I just love their also their trajectory. You're talking about like how they piece work or patchwork their offensive staff and their offensive grouping together. They ate a lot of dead cap this year to kind of get rid of those more expensive players like Jordan Poyer. Um, uh, I forget who else it was. Uh, they could have eaten the Von Miller contract. The other but they safety. Didn't. The yeah. other safety was Jordan Inside Poyer State. and um, Micah Hyde. Green Micah Bay Hyde. Packer. Thank you. Yeah. Is he a Green Bay Packer right now? He's he, not no, starting. He, he was. He was. Oh, gotcha. Um, but yeah, no, it, they did eat a lot of dead cap. Their rookie and their young running back are their rookies and young receivers and all that stuff. I see that team only being better projection wise next year as well after they pull off what they do this Assuming year. Assuming that Coleman is able to develop into a true alpha and you're able to get, you know, I believe he was either a first round pick or a second round pick, a very I early think he was a second. Pick. Yeah, if early he can second. Play to that draft position. 
Um, they'll be totally fine. And then a little bit of a tangent, I love Khalil Shakir. I think that he's one of the most elusive players in the entire NFL across any position, along with maybe like Tolbert on the Cowboys. Um, yeah. That guy's the real deal for what they use him for. Just the way that we saw DJ Moore for the Bears being used as like the, the quick game yak guy, Khalil Shakir far and away superior to DJ Moore in that regard, in my opinion. Yeah, I hope they win, and then I hope they're more competitive even next year. And go Bills! That that division's wide open for them for the next few years. So let's let's hope they. After what happened with the Jets firing their general manager, reports saying that Aaron Rodgers is not going to come back. I mean, ironically, the team that seems the bit most scary would be the Patriots if their quarterback can continue to ascend the way that he is. I agree. Poor Tua, man. Just stop playing football, dude. Honestly. 